Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some Ace Attorney Trilogy. Last time we started Recipe for Turnabout, uh, you may be able to tell from the save date there that that was quite a while ago. Um, yeah, I... This case kind of demotivated me a little bit because, you know, you've got this character who's French and I can't do the accent and also everyone's being freaking weird about their gender and there's this old guy who's creepy and it's just a little bit uncomfortable. Um, let's get this over with. Uh, so next up, part two, trial. Uh, we're going to be seeing more of Armstrong and, you know, in the courtroom and the people in the courtroom are going to be weird about the gender, so... <sighs> Just be prepared. I'm sorry. January 7th, 9.48 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? But... He was there when I took the coffee over, sir. Scout's honor. Uh, is that Gumshoe? Maggie. I don't know who it is. It is Gumshoe. Ack! D Detective Gumshoe! Uh, are you doing alright? How are you feeling? As if you need to ask either question, sir. Don't let him get you down, Maggie. And don't forget to eat well, okay? Roger. And you. Y yes You'd better square this case away, got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Squaring away some paperwork for your arrest. Uh, I think he's serious. Hey, detective, you're on our side for once, right? Yep. So you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, of course. I've got the situation under control. I'm going to be the first witness on the stand today. If something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Sure. Okay, we're forming a united front today, pal. You get me? So he's just going to be a normal witness. He's not doing anything special. <laughs> I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. January 7th, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number four. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Bitter. Mr. Um, Mr. Wright. Y yes, Your Honor? Ah! What's wrong? N nothing. It's just that whenever I suggested you in the previous trial, your response was, You's talking to me? It was a little, well, intimidating. No, no, that wasn't me. That was the phony Phoenix. I see. So our trusty Phoenix Wright is back with us now, is he? Now, trusty. So, Mr. Gotto, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite, whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright. I wasn't questioning whether you were Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. Oh, snap. That's what I intend to find out. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. Who could it be? As everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for relevant testimony during this retrial. Nor will I stand for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said. Trust me. Now then, Mr. Gotto, please summon your first witness. It's Detective Gumshoe! Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation? Witness, state your name for the court. 
Huh? Oh, sorry, sir. The name's Police Department Detective. Occupation, Dick Gumshoe. Wait. <laughs> Other way around, detective. Huh? Oh, sorry. Anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday. Sir. Since yesterday? Yeah, the guy who was on the initial investigation is tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control. For everyone's sake. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe. Would you outline for the court the basic facts of the case? I I yes, sir. The victim's name was Glenn Elg. He was a professional programmer. He was on the payroll of Blue Screens Incorporated, a local company. This is the victim's autopsy report. The court accepts this into evidence. Glenn's autopsy report added to the court record. These clues may be important to us. We'll keep that in mind. Um, and here are the floor plans of the restaurant. When the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. The poisoned coffee was brought over to him by the, um... By the waitress. The waitress being the accused? Yeah. The victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. At the time of the incident, there were two other people in the restaurant. Mr. Jean Armstrong, the owner and chef, and a regular by the name of Victor Kudo. Mr. Victor Kudo. Mr. the bleh. <laughs> that guy. The old guy. Hmm. It still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Trey Beyond floor plans added to the court record. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, let's have your testimony. Um, yes, sir. Witness testimony. The incident. When the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table, sir. We understand that the guy, Glenn Elk, was listening to the radio at the time. Traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, it looks like Ms. Bird might have had, well, some kind of a motive. Hmm. Using the dark, aromatic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. Classy lady. The facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Wright, I would ask you to begin your cross-examination, but... Yes? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? I already told you, that wasn't me! <sighs> okay, we have some things to ask about here. Like, obviously we want to know what motive they're talking about. We probably do already know, because we had it discussed earlier. Uh, do we have evidence about it yet? <laughs> it doesn't look like it. But yeah, the, the lottery ticket, right? That uh, Mr. L could won. Some kind of a motive? Yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Objection. You know what my golden rule is, detective? Chuck out a bad cup of coffee. You can always get another. Huh? I didn't get it. I'm saying we can always get another witness on the stand if we have to chuck you out. So stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Ms. Bird's motive? Come on, Gumshoe. She was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it. That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. <gasps> Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one. Then, is it possible Maggie stole the, stole the winning one? What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Yeah, I think we want to know more about this. Wait a minute. 
The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Huh. I have here in my hand the very ticket in question. <gasps> Gotto stole the ticket. <laughs> so that's the half a million dollar lottery ticket? One of the female police officers found it when she was conducting a search. Why do you say female police officers when you're gonna say she a second later? It's just... That's a really weird line. Of the defendant. What? Oh shit, Maggie had the ticket. Order, order. Ha. Huh. She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. Y you will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately. Hmm, I better keep an eye on that ticket. The way the judge's voice is quivering. Victim's lottery ticket added to the court record. This ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial too, but it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? It's just a scrap of paper. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. You really think there are any contradictions in this testimony? To be honest, I don't know. But Gumshoe told us out in the lobby. He said we'd be forming a united front, right? How will we win the case if he doesn't throw us a line? I don't have a whole lot of options right now. The best I can do is gather the facts together, I guess. Okay, so we need to press some other places as well, I believe. Yeah. Uh, boop. Can I stop you for just a minute? Huh? What is it? Did I say something that contradicts the evidence? He's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying. Your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Ms. Bird. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Yeah, that's what she said, and I... What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? Hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, it's true. Their two testimonies tie up on that. They both said there was no other guy at the table. Hmm... What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I think we want to know some more. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him? Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. Ha. Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee at Trey Beyond, right? I have here in my possession a ticket. A ticket? Looks, like, looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. <laughs> So cheesy. God, are you trying to be cool, but it's not working. <sighs> Out of the edge. This is a photograph taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime. How, Mr. Trite, could anyone have overlooked the second person at the table? Ugh. I mean, you can see about half of the other chair, but I think there would be room for someone to hide. It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. Crime photo right to the court record. Uh, let's have another look at that photo. Like, you can see that there's some space beside Glenn's chair on the other side, so the other person could just be standing a bit further to the left and they wouldn't be spotted. Granted, that's not what happened, um, but it could have been, and that is a silly assumption because, yeah, the angle they're coming from isn't very good. What was on the radio? <sighs> oh, sorry. Ugh, Danny yawn. He was listening to his radio, you say? Yeah, he had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Yes, actually, it is important. And what was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? How should I know? <sighs> Thanks a lot. We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere. 
isn't going very well, is it? Hmm. Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? We do need to know what he was listening to. It's very important. But unfortunately, we can't get that information just yet. So, press. So, traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid, or was it a powder? If I had to put it in layman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. So the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Ha. Huh. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? The vegan took his coffee black, with no sugar. Mmm. It seems that the poison could only have been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? I think we want to press on everything, basically. Are you absolutely certain the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to this file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. But what proof is there that the victim ever drank any of it? Oh hey, you're right! That's what I was thinking. In case you were wondering, that last objection was for the detective there. Huh? For me? Oh hey, you're right. You'll be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Th that piece, sir? Yes, that piece. Um, <laughs> what piece was it again? This. <laughs> Should I be grateful this coffee's only hot enough to give me first degree burns? Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's coffee cup. Sorry, yes, the victim's cup. Take a good look at the rim. Oh yes, it's unmistakable. There is clearly a Pacific rim on it. A coffee stain on it. <laughs> Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poisoned coffee that was in this cup. The victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this. <laughs> For the record, the only prints on the cup were the victim's and the defendants. Coffee cup added to the court record. Upon further investigation of this cup, we found a certain chemical substance. That's enough. The facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Furthermore, it seems beyond reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit this crime. I like an old man who knows the score. There is also the matter of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. That alone provides a very credible motive. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, that's because the court has ruled guilty once already. I'd say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. With one final, decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? This is the apron the delightful Ms. Bird was wearing at the time. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. Th that stain looks like... it can't be blood, can it? Huh, it seems the star of our play was a little flustered. And somehow spilled coffee on herself. The coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. The... pocket? A search carried out right after the incident uncovered this. Potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. A, a bottle of poison? Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the only ones on it. What? 
Oh, shit. <laughs> order, order, order. The court will accept these items into evidence. Apron added to the court record. Potassium sign added to the court record. There's something still bothering me, Mr. Gotto. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. Well, detective, could this stain really be blood? <laughs> He's so dramatic. N no way, sir. That's... It's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? She must have gotten someone her apron while taking someone their breakfast that day. You could have spoken up a little sooner, Detective Gumshoe. Pull a stunt like that again and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness. I thought everyone knew what it was already. Hmm, I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case. The motive, the opportunity, and the supporting evidence. They have all been clearly established. Well tried. It seems you really are a phony after all. Ugh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. We're gonna find some contradictions soon, I promise. <laughs> Witness testimony. The investigation. The crime was reported at 2.25pm by a kinda scary old man, sir. Poor Maggie had passed out from the shock. It must have been real tough for her. The victim didn't have any identification on him, but we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison. And that was it. There was nothing else missing from the crime scene. Hmm. That's what I said. You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good. Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Don't count on any more cross-examinations after this one. So, let the fun begin. The investigation. Okay, we actually do have a contradiction here, because if we look at... They mentioned uh, the lottery ticket and the bottle of poison, but there is something else that we think might be missing. If you have a look at this sports paper, we know that there was a disc that said MC Bomber on it, right? And that's not here. That's gone. So, what's up with that? Uh, I think first we need to press, though. We'll get to that in a moment. A little bit. Scary old man, Detective Gumshoe? There's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, uh, we're obviously talking about the same old man. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old guy still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them. And seeds. Hmm. Seeds. Ha. It was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. <laughs> it was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. He's, he's, he's just Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> I guess not even the Mighty Goto can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in that place at the time. He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. How long was the defendant unconscious for? The officers got to the crime scene at around 2.40. Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. It took another 10 minutes or so before she came to. I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too. I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that, all pretty and peaceful. You're a professional detective, Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Save the romantics for your own time, detective. All we need to know about is the investigation. Oops, <laughs> I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? He didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? 
No, I don't think so. The victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. 58 cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me, pal. The victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? Ow, the edge. I think I'm onto something here. Wait a sec. Huh? Did I, some, did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Yeah, basically. In that case, how are we able to identify the victim so quickly? Oh, that. He's so let down, he's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. There was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with the lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glenn L. visited his doctor before he went to Trey Beyan. We got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a reliable enough source for the court. What should I do? Should I leave this alone or ask to hear more? So, what sort of medicine was in the bag? Well, actually, the bag we found was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. It was completely empty? The victim's prescription bag added to the court record. Does the label on the bag not say what the medicine inside is supposed to be? Because mine do. <laughs> ha. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate. Desperate are you, trite? Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? But the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? In that case, isn't it possible someone planted the evidence in Maggie's, Maggie's pocket? Hey, yeah, you've nailed it, pal. Hmm. It happens to me all the time. We had a department party the other day, and when I got home, I was wearing the boss's shoes. Okay. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. Sorry. So, trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. That's a pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Um, well, I'd love to if I had any. It appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Wright. Continue with your testimony, witness. So the half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for, but wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. The one the restaurant owner took. He won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it? It was just one dollar, detective. I guess no one cares when it's that little. Except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in this testament, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Gumshoe isn't giving us anything to work with. And we can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something. Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like, dumb and dumber. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on Gumshoe, be the dumbest you've ever been! <laughs> okay, so, the MC Bomber is missing, but something else is missing. Because uh, this prescription bag is empty. And he just got the prescription, so where did the medicine go? Objection! Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point something out to you. There is just one small contradiction in your testimony. Oh, finally! I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will you? You testified that nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Did the officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Um, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Trey Beyond. Where then did the medicine disappear to? Y you are too cool, pal. Uh, indeed. Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, 
I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison. And the victim's medicine mysteriously disappeared. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. Uh, order, order. Well, Mr. Gotto, what do you have to say to that? Huh. That's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? New Ear Otolaryngology... Oh my god. <laughs> New Ear Otolaryngological... Otolaryngological Clinic. Otolaryngological? <laughs> Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Gotto? Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elk found himself in a fight. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. He ruptured his eardrum? Then what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. What? I mean, there are poisons that can be absorbed through the skin, so... It's mentioned in the autopsy report, if you read the fine print. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in very, very fine print. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medis medication while he was at Trebian. Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. Maybe he didn't eat it, maybe it was topically applied and then absorbed, come on. Ugh. It seems that this medication is irrelevant to the case after all. N no Nick, if you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over. She's right. But I can't get away with any old weak objection. What should I do? I think I want to push the medication issue. I think it's important. Let me just chuck down a quick save. Only moments ago, Mr. Gotto made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Trebian. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? But the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the crime scene. However insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug will contain potassium cyanide. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served will contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. Ugh. That's enough. Mr. Gotto, is the detective the only witness the prosecution wishes to call? Mr. Gotto? Um, I, uh, I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. It's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Crudo? That pigeon hater? Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems little more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yay! Good job, Nick! The court will adjourn for a ten minute recess after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Ha! Huh. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for recess. January 7th, 11.03am, District Court, Defendant Lobby, Number 1. Phew! That was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir! No, it's my line! I think I really did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me, but he totally set me up. I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's gotta do his job, right? No, he can quit. He can stop being a cop. A cab. 
It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me. Even those never-ending bird seeds. <laughs> January 7th, 11.15am. District Court. Courtroom number 4. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Gotto, the next witness, please. Prosecution calls the lucky old-timer who caught the show over a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Name and occupation, if you don't mind. The name is Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty ought make me. Mind you, I can be quite emotional at times, too. We don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Gah, listen, young'un. How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do, or did, back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe you could embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. Now then, witness, were you in the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh yes, I was eating some seeds over a cup of Giavacino. Seeds? What do you think these are, hmm? Uh, I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps? Did I? Oh yes, oh yes I did, I saw it all. Then please, tell the court where all is. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. What I witnessed. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. <gasps> the man took one sip of it, looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl, right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Is that better? I mean... it's It just seems like a... I don't know. <laughs> Car, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses. It's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Uh, excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the good old days slip by. Wow, I can't relate to this guy at all. I hate him. Wow, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Y y yes, Your Honor. Okay, we're going to start pressing. We need more information than he's already given us. So you saw the victim then? You saw Mr. Glenn Elg? I wanted to know if Guts and Braun retained his championship or not. So he was looking at the sports paper the victim was reading, huh? And the location in question. There are petitions between tables on the same side of the restaurant, right? So what if there are? If you say that you could see the victim, that means you were sitting at a table on the other side of the restaurant, correct? I go to that place to drink Javachino. I don't go to sit. I don't remember which table I was sitting at. You mean you go there to eye the waitress? Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. 
I see. My eyesight's fine. Doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. And I saw what the serving girl put into the Javachino as well. I bet I know what's coming up when something tells me I'm not gonna like it. Is that too fast? Hang on. I bet I know what's coming up, and something tells me I'm not gonna like it. That's better. Your Honor, we need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Hmm. I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Sure, sure. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Oh no. Did she really put that into the coffee? You out me, boy. She took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar? In a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Huh. A bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is. That's the one. That's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume? So, what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Ugh. He took just one sip? You young'uns, you waste everything. Those Javachinos cost eight dollars. In the good old days, we would have drank every last drop, eaten the cup, and then died. <laughs> Congratulations, you have earned the title of fattiest man to grace a courtroom. So it was an immediate death. Well, with potassium cyanide, I suppose that is possible. Oh yes, he slumped over without so much as a twitch. I felt the Javachino I just drank turn sour in my stomach. Oh yes, I know that feeling. And the waitress? I presume she is... Press? You said, I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her... her... you know... She's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit? But anyone could wear just such a uniform, even me! Mr. Wright, please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. Hmm. Not a fan of that joke, I've gotta say. Don't get all excited, Nick, you gotta keep yourself together. I guess I got a bit carried away. Gah, there are other things I recognize about her too. Seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you can recognize about the defendant. I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon in her hair and her apron straps were loose. Those are still her clothes. You just seem to remember several details about her appearance, but what about the most crucial detail of all? Her face. Ah, as if I wouldn't remember that. The witness noticed the straps on the accused apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right, I can even tell you the colour of ribbon in her the colour of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with the witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more to this somehow. Uh, straps, maybe? Mr. Kudo, you seem especially interested in straps. Why is that? What? The ribbon in her hair, the straps in her apron? What's the fascination? F fascination? Objection! People have all kinds of fetishes, right? We don't need to embarrass the witness. Listen, you young upstarts, I haven't got some sick strap fetish. Hmm. Is there any relevance to the witness's unusual love of straps, Mr. Wright? I was just curious as to why he was so fixated on the waitress's straps. I said I haven't got a strap fetish. How many times I have to repeat myself? Very well. 
Continue with your testimony, Mr. Kudo, and make it strapless. Okay, I think I picked the wrong thing. <laughs> do you think old Seedy really saw Maggie do it? Well, he probably had his eye on the waitress the whole time. That's why he was there. But he was there for the cute outfits, right? Not the waitress. I, I guess. Hmm, she makes a good point, though. Hey, did I just say something clever? I wonder if the waitress Mr. Kudo saw really was Maggie. That's what we have to figure out, Nick. I think I need to press and select the other one. Let me have a quick look. I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. So we already saw this bit. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that you never saw the waitress from the front at all? Ha! Huh, he's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons. This is harassment. I tell you I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons. I'm just telling you what I saw. Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identifying features. Features you observe from the front, that is, to your testimony. Sure, sure. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. And if I can't find a hole in it soon, it'll get even longer, I bet. Okay, this is a contradiction. Because you see, we know that Maggie was wearing this apron. It, did, it wouldn't have had the coffee stain on it yet, but it would have an enormous blood stain. And you'd think he would have noticed that, right? <laughs> Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. Ah, that filthy thing with salt fruit fills like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he's done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. Do you think I'd forget something as dirty as that? Hmm. Well, you half-witted clot. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Uh? And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means, if you had really seen this apron before... Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front. Oops. Witness. You can't just oops your way out of this. Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That being the defendant, Ms. Maggie Bird? Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm. I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say you remember seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect walking order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what burger a customer wanted. You can't remember? Probably like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well, let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. About the victim, witness testimony. He was another of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand and the noisy brat kept rustling its pages. The young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. Then the serving girl in question brought over the Javachino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony you have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this, Nick? 
We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean. Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. Okay, so the problem here is that he's, um, Victor's told us that Glenn was holding the newspaper in his right hand, which means his free hand is his left hand. But if we have a look at the coffee cup, you can see that the lip, lip mark is on, the si on this side, which means it had to be held from the right, where the handle is. Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory? I know, I know, there's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you. Nothing. If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song. Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Ah, what is this? Kindergarten? But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song. <laughs> Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he came from. Wait! If you think I'm gonna stand here and listen to you tell me I'm mad, you're wrong. I don't care about that dirty coffee cup. I know what I saw. You still insist on your testimony? That young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen, I am. It's that dead young hotbot and you, you spiky-haired yahoo who are at fault. Who? Me? Th thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. You can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure, why not hear a little more? M Mr. Kudo. But this is my 16th cup of coffee, so this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. Left hand or right hand? Witness testimony. The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, your honor. It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers. That's kind of cool. <laughs> a monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. God, I wish that were true. <laughs> HDTV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth. It's true. It doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts in good old black and white. Left hand or right hand? Okay, so... If he's wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs, we can have a look at him. That would be his left ear, which is very strange because his left ear is actually the one that was being injured. Uh, might be in the autopsy report. No? I don't know if we have the evidence for that. But yeah, the point is his, his eardrum is ruptured. He can't listen to the radio with a ruptured eardrum, which means the headpiece, the earpiece must have been somewhere else. Objection. Yeah. I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? 
You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong, it was his left ear without a doubt. I can only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You've no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo, but the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Huh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right, it's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear, because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. Pigeon! Mm-hmm. Pretty pigeon! Mm-hmm. Order, order, order. This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Goto. Arrgh. A single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. <laughs> Captain, are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the room clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down, I know I'm right. The lad drank his javachino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand, and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Impossible. The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of his coffee. Which hand the victim used to pick up his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. Elg drank the poisoned coffee. Like this. <laughs> Sadly, Mr. Goddard, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether the witness's memory is credible. And the results are clear. Testimony given by this witness is useless. Ah. I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court. But to be frank, his testimony is a farce. D did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey! I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo. You can't reach me from there. I'm ordering the defense and the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Wait! If we stop now, where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo. Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even dot his T's across his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I can do. I've kept my mouth shut until now, but there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance. I want another crack at you, young shark. M me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. W well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? The final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook. Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the garbage here you want if you come to my house after the trial. Maybe 68 years old, Victor Kudo is still a man. That's enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet. Much, much quicker. I can't believe this is happening. Ha ha ha, you better get ready, youngster. I get the picture, just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's gotta be using some sort of an infinite ammo code with that box of seeds. <laughs> The final showdown. First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of myself. The young boy slumped over to the table as soon as he took one sip of his Javachino. Well, the clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke, and a strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, hmm? 
Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Hey, you're doubting me again? You're doubting a poor defenseless old man? N no, we're well, not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what, probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain, that's why it's all you can think of. Very well, Mr. Wright. Your final cross-examination, please. The final showdown. Ba -da -ba -da. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I believe the problem is if we have a look at uh, this photograph. Yeah, the vase isn't isn't broken. Thought you fine. Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Hmm. So what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there, intact. Huh? Lost your tongue, Grandad? I'm no granddad of yours, Hopscotch. Ow, ow! Enough. If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night. Ah! What is it now? I just remembered something. Y yes? Go on. The broken vase. Haha, <laughs> it was on my table. What? Ah, well, you see... It startled me when that young man collapsed. So I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table. Ah, yes, it was on my table. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked. Gross. <sighs> Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Uh, I'd like to ask a question now. Have I, uh... Have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Ah, Wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh yes, I remember something else. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me! Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked and I am still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony of what we have heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand, and the earpiece which was inserted into his left ear out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it! I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There is one more thing before I call today's session to an end. Uh, one more thing, Your Honor? The witness we just heard from. He is most insistent that his testimony should be of use, so he summarized it accordingly into this statement. Um, okay. You may each have a copy of it, if you wish. Whatever. Prosecution doesn't need props like that. God, is really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies, my own, yours, and Mr. Goddard's. Yes, Your Honor. Victor's testimony added to the court record. I'm sorry? This isn't a piece of testimony. More like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? That is all. This court is adjourned. To be continued. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we're going back to investigating. Boop. Cool beans. Bye!